God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from our paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another in your creation. The river of is to your life on my heart, and sets us in on the way of war, so that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming. People of God, a new thing is growing in our very midst. It is a tender branch and it is a living song. By the water and the spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ Jesus and your sins are washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
For in the days of Noah, for as the days of Noah were, so will there be coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would have not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Make things and you take from your work and 
says, I am, right? This is the name of God, and it's a breath. I am, and it's a sort of weird name. They're above us. It's a breath. When you say, God, what are you to breathe? And I am is not a building. And I am is not a man. I am is a verb. It's a breath in. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is a God in relationship. And is a God of presence and community and people. And this God works a little differently. The baseline, the primary way that it operates, this God that acts, is different than these other gods speaks, is Ten Commandments. That's the baseline. That's sort of the bottom spot. And do you remember the Ten Commandments? You shall vote our gods before me. You shall not have any great images. Uh, you shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You have to memorize these for confirmation so you all know them, right? Uh, the fourth one, you remember the fourth one? Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And that's an important one. I'm going to come back to that one in a minute. Remember that. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Honor your father and mother, and thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, you shall not trouble. Right? These are the baseline. This is the way God communicates and relates, and this is the actions in which God's presence is to be found. First three tell us who God is. Can't be captured in things. The last group tell us where the action and the life with others and in the community that God makes is to be found and how to treat each other. But I told you I was going to come back to that fourth one. That's the fourth one. Yeah. To remember the Sabbath and keep it cold. That's a strange one. Have you think much about this one? If you don't think much about it, I'm about to think about it a little bit for you, okay? To be Yahweh. God, whose name is a verb that can be captured in a place and in a thing, and whose name is a breath and a breathing in, and who makes a people, who begins as a very small group of people, by the way. And to live in their presence and to be a God that relates and is a verb centers on this one. But the Ten Commandments have these first three that tell us who God is, and then they have this last group that tell us how we're supposed to live together. But the bridge, the one that holds it all together, is remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. What do you do on the Sabbath? You rest. A Sabbath is a day of rest, right? It's a day that remembers that God, God self rested. Now think about all those other gods, right? You you remember how we went on about all those other gods, right? You know the refrain. It's Billy Idol, and I love that his name is Idol. I'm talking about all these other guys. It's Billy Idol. More, more, more. Well, uh, rest. The God who rests. The God who relates. The God who comes into your midst and whose name can't be captured in a thing. And who asks us to take a break. That's the opposite of more, more, more. I want to make sure that you hear that. If all the options out there are more, 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 this God speaks and is in our midst in a different way. It's in a Sabbath way. And the Sabbath is a break. And it asks you not to produce, not to make, not to build, but to take a breath. And breathing is God's presence and breathing is God's name. It's not about more, more, more. Now, someone, or one of you, many of you, all of you have this figured out. You have something that you have something that you're like, I need to ask about this. You're thinking, someone's thinking. Didn't the Israelites build? Didn't they have a temple? Didn't the Israelites get to be all about more, more, more rules and more, more ways and more? What if I told you it's just that easy to come off of what the Sabbath is supposed to be? And what if I told you that the gods that I've named, the other gods, aren't the only options? You and I have our own gods too. Money, consume, uh, the gods of the internet, and television, and all of them. And if you watch, I watch football like all weekend. I think I know that there's more commercials during all that than there is actual playing time. Even when people are playing, they're still with the commercials in the back and all sorts of stuff. And you know what? Every single 
single one of them says, more, more, more. And it's so easy to slip into this. And it's Christmas time, right? And what does Christmas time tell us? Well, I'm not quite done buying gifts yet. I have more time, I can buy more stuff, and it's all about more, 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 and it's so easy to slip into this. We have our own gods, and there are these other gods in the Bible, and they all want more, more, more. And it's easy to slip into this, but this is not where God tells us that God is present. The bridge, the piece that holds the commandments and the baseline together, Sabbath. If uh, you think about it, think about Jesus, God the Son, who when we walk on earth has all these stories that fill the gospel. Do you know the framework for those? Uh, do you know what day almost all of his stories happen on? It almost fills the gospel that it's the Sabbath day when he's talking to people. And almost every time it's because he knows that more and more and more is so easy trying to talk about a God that rests and that breathes and is about something other than more, 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 and people have such a hard time here. I'm not so many, I'm not even so innocent as to stand up here and tell you that uh, the season is about more, more, more. I know that that's what we do. But I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that regardless of how many people there are, that is the issue. We look around and we see what God is doing and calling for us today. God is the God of Scripture. God is Creator. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is Yahweh. And God is about relating and acting with the verb. Jesus is constantly healing and interacting and present. And so what if, what if the season we just thought about that? I'm not so innocent and perfect as to believe I'm not somewhat a part of all this. But what if we thought about this differently? What if we gave up the return? What if we gave up on mid-1980s building our world just for a little while? Right? One more time and I'm done with this one. Right? We're gonna, I'm going to say it and we're going to set it aside. No more building our world during this season. More, 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 no more. In the Bible, all the way back again, there is Moses, and there is the story of Yahweh, and there's this early idea of who God is and how God works, and perhaps you remember this part of the story. Moses stands in front of Pharaoh, that would be God. And Moses says, Let my people go. Right? Remember this part of the story? I'm not so naive, I'm not so perfect, or innocent to not know that, that what part of the city we were in. But I also know that I'm hopeful all the time for peace, for joy, for God's presence, and how easy it is to lose that in that refrain that I'm not going to stand anymore. And so, people of God called here by the Holy Spirit. The amount of people call isn't what's important. It's the call by the God who claims us. And here's what it is. In the midst of all the gods that would have us, that would ask us to produce and make and build and do all the stuff that's so out of control, God's voice is to let his go. To let you go from all of that. And to breathe. And for Advent to be a Sabbath. And to be less about the stuff and the building and the making. And to be much more about the actions, the breath, time with the relationships. And I'm not so perfect. I'm not so innocent. I'm not so removed to know we're not going to do a little bit of that stuff I get. God claims the people. And all it takes is a few of us to hear that God lets God's people go from all of that. And if you want to find joy and presence and salvation, it is not 
in for the goal. That's not what God is. God is here. God is in our midst. God is in relationship. God is in caring for each other and for ourselves and for our neighbor. Action. Being. So this starts out.
Of this bread and drink from this cup, 
we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gather into one, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we be us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So this is assuredly not the most elaborate spread you're going to have during this whole holiday season. It's probably not the most elaborate spread that you've had this whole week, right? But in this simple gathering, we're promised big changes. Out of the simplicity, we're promised God's presence, God's joining with us in this season, and God's love in all this. Taste and see that the Lord is Thank mm-hmm. you. This 
This is the body of Christ that's given for you. This is the body of Christ that's given for you. This is the body of Christ that's given for you. This is the body of Christ. Grace and mercy. 